This inaugural episode is sponsored by CuriosityStream, where you can watch thousands of great documentaries, and Nebula, where you can watch these videos one week early and ad-free, together just 15 bucks a year. Good ol' Celsius. It just makes sense, right? Water freezes at 0 degrees and boils at 100. It's simple, intuitive, logical, endearing. Who doesn't like Celsius? Only the greater United States, Cayman Islands, and Liberia. And only because they aren't used to it. If Americans grew up in a completely Celsius world, they too would see Fahrenheit as an arbitrary relic of the past. Wrong. Fahrenheit is just plain better. Here's the thing. Most types of measurements, weight, length, volume, voltage, and so on, are multi-purpose, and therefore deliberately scale neutral. We measure light things like feathers and heavy things like planets. Small things like the number of likes on this video and big things like the degree to which I'm right. Temperature is different. Let me ask you, what was the last thing you measured the temperature of? How about the 10 times before that? I'm willing to bet you were checking the weather. And if, like most people, you live between these two lines on the planet Earth, the lowest temperature you're likely to experience is somewhere around 0 degrees Fahrenheit. And the highest is, again, around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The planet's average surface temperature is 58, right about in the middle. 0 is really cold, 100 is really hot, and 50 is roughly average. Now that's intuitive. You can say things like, today is in the high 60s, and have a very clear mental picture of the 0 to 100 gradient. The main advantage of Celsius are its two reference points, the significance of 0 and 100. But 90% of the time we measure the temperature of air, not water. And when in checking the weather do you need to know the boiling point of water? In a century or two when we're all swimming to get groceries, then let's switch to a water-based temperature scale. Oh, and on the subject of climate change, Fahrenheit makes hot temperatures sound hotter. It's 100 degrees outside instinctively sounds like you've maxed out the temperature, which is basically true. 38 just isn't very alarming. If you're one of the billions of people who live here, the weather basically ranges between about 15 and 30 degrees Celsius all year round, confining your entire confused existence to just 15 whole numbers. That's just sad. Not to get all Neil deGrasse Tyson on you, but Fahrenheit provides almost twice the resolution of Celsius. That same 15 number range becomes 27 in Fahrenheit. For the less math inclined among us, that's a complementary upgrade of 12 spacious liberating numbers. Which means you don't need decimals to express a precise temperature, and yet a single degree Fahrenheit is noticeable. At some point we've all fiddled with our thermostats by just that much. What's wrong with decimals, you ask? Well, nothing, I guess, but if we don't have to use them, why bother? Might as well keep things simple. But wait, when does water freeze? Checkmate, atheist! The answer is… uh… Just kidding, it's 32. For all those times you're doing some precision cooking, stoichiometry, or competing on are you smarter than a fifth grader, I have faith in your intellectual faculties. After all, even we silly Americans manage. Hold on, you start frantically mashing on your keyboard? Fahrenheit is so arbitrary. And to that I say, yeah, Fahrenheit is a little weird, aren't we all? But that doesn't make it bad. In fact, Celsius is arbitrary too. Did you know 100 is not when water boils? That depends on elevation. It's 92.7 in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and just 83.8 in the world's highest permanent settlement. Yeah, so simple and intuitive. One could say Celsius is biased towards those at sea level, the people the rest of us look down upon. Until last year, a kilogram was based on a specific cylinder of platinum iridium from the 19th century locked in a vault somewhere in France. But who cares? All of these systems are arbitrary. And if they aren't, they should be. Let's design for ease of use, not being technically correct, whatever that means. Sure, there are times where the details matter, science for example, but scientists use Kelvin. So if they're using Kelvin and the rest of us would be better off with Fahrenheit, where does that leave Celsius? I know, I know, I can hear you squirming around in your chair, squinting in frustration as you slowly realize how long you've been lied to by big Celsius. You're probably thinking, how could I be such a sheep for so long, and am I really nothing but a bloody husk for corporate Celsius to fill? Don't worry, I forgive you. In hindsight, measuring temperature, something we usually do for air, based on the freezing and boiling points of water, never really made much sense. We always assumed it did because the rest of the metric family is so much better. 
Celsius is a well-disguised freeloader, riding the coattails of his accomplished brothers and sisters. His misdeeds go unnoticed only thanks to the protection afforded by his tribe. But his day of reckoning is long overdue. He's the undeserving trust fund baby, coasting through life not offering anyone much of anything, and all while dishonoring the metric name. Fahrenheit, meanwhile, is the earnest yet admittedly imperfect underprivileged hard worker. Again, let's be clear, her resume isn't perfect. If we're starting from scratch, I can imagine a better hypothetical system. But she makes the best of what we have. The real problem here are conversions. Subtract 32, multiply by 1.8, that's garbage. Someone needs to take one for the team if we're ever going to realize the dream of uniform global units. But let's be real here, it's not going to be us foaming at the mouth patriotic Americans. We're far too stubborn. In a 2015 poll, 64% opposed switching to the metric system. But what if we put this in terms Americans understand? The only way this works is if it's our idea, doesn't sound too mutually beneficial, and involves an obnoxious amount of fireworks. What if I told you I can even smuggle in the metric system? Here's the plan. We start a rumor that the imperial system was communist propaganda designed to lobotomize us freedom lovers, to stunt our intellectual development and hold back our technological progress. We respond to the imperial threat the only way Americans know how, with imperialism. We threaten to wage war. Then, just at the height of tensions, we offer a trade. Perhaps the greatest trade deal in the history of trade deals maybe ever. If the rest of the world switches to Fahrenheit, we'll switch to the rest of the metric system. Crisis averted. This cross-cultural exchange fosters a new era of peace, makes catastrophic conversion errors a thing of the past, and probably ends world hunger. You're welcome. Now, you're probably left wondering, what else am I terribly confused and wrong about? Well, since you asked, you can find out one week before YouTube, watch without ads, and get access to other exclusive content on Nebula. Nebula is the expansion pack for YouTube. It's the streaming site I created, along with other channels like Wendover Productions, Real Engineering, and Real Life Lore, to give you the very best viewing experience. There's no algorithm or annoying ads, just hours and hours of the videos you love. Right now, you can get it and access to thousands of great nature, science, and history documentaries on CuriosityStream for the incredibly affordable price of just 15 bucks a year. Sign up with a link in the description, and you'll get an email with access to Nebula.